All right, everybody. Today we are going to be doing six millimeter poplar. It is currently cut in a square shape of 100. I think it's 185 millimeters by 185 millimeters. Basically, just over six inches. Um, I'm going to be cutting out, not engraving, but cutting out this love in a certain font. If you notice, all the letters are connected, so when it is done cutting out, it'll cut out all the white area, so only the red will be left. Um, I've already told it to add five tasks that are engraving at the speed of 22 millimeters a second, which is the fastest speed I can cut at. So this will be the sixth one. I'm going to hit start. I'm going to come back here to the machine and we're going to watch it cut. Now I'm sitting at about, oh I'd say, 50% on uh, my power level, but I'm at 100% cutting speed. Now if you're wondering why I want 100% cutting speed, instead of you know going smaller or whatever, or slower, the lower the heat but the faster the speed, whenever you use a laser to cut, you're going to have this wonderful smooth edge the slower it goes. Now I'm going to shut this so we can get the smoke to go out the vent here in the back instead of coming towards me with the camera. And the light above me is a little hard to watch it engrave with, or cut with, sorry. There I go calling it engraving even though I'm actually cutting. And this is six millimeter poplar. This is not two or three or four millimeter. This is actually six millimeter poplar hardwood. Um, there is no glue in this. It's just straight hardwood. Now there's a guy on laser engraving site on uh, Facebook that was telling me that this little K40 laser could not do this. Now, yes, it's not going to make it through on the first pass. So what? As I told him, as long as I can complete the job and make my customer happy, that's all that matters. And any of you out there that are hobbyists or trying to start a little uh, engraving business or whatever business, that you, whatever you want to call it, um, see there it is, it's done with the first run. You can see it says the word love, everything's still connected. Now it's going for the second one. If you notice, there we go, we got some flame finally. But if you notice, it's it's very little flame. It goes out almost instantly. Got lots of smoke. When there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, if you're starting and you want to start with a good laser um, for inexpensive, I mean, if any of you have done any research when it comes to the laser community, you're talking, you know, six seven thousand dollars initial investment on buying a brand name uh, laser everything from a used epilogue uh, zing laser which usually for that price you're only going to get the zing 16 or you're dealing with the uh, full spectrum lasers or you know just all the sorts of lasers out there and these are just the co2 lasers these are not the fiber lasers which those fiber lasers, you could spend more money on a fiber laser just for an initial setup than you would on most cars that uh, we consider inexpensive nowadays. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's what you're looking at. Now, the reason why I'm using Poplar, I already used Poplar to make a puzzle. Uh, basically what I did is I engraved this cool Bible verse onto a bunch of wood, and uh, then I put a pattern of a puzzle over it and cut it out and now I have this wonderful cool little poplar wood puzzle at six millimeters thick that works really well okay it's done with the second cut and I'm gonna go ahead and lift the lid while it's in a certain area now I want you to notice it's actually pretty deep I'm trying not to get the phone in the way of the laser now me being always prepared I have this cool mirror on a stick for any of you Jeff Dunham fans, you would have found that funny. Anyway, so, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hook that over so you can see underneath. Now, if you notice, we're not seeing anything yet, okay? It's probably not going to make it all the way through the wood until about the fourth or fifth uh, cut cycle. And yes, am I going to have some charring on the wood around it? Yes, I will. But you know what? A lightly damp cloth rubbing on the edge 
is going to get rid of the majority of the soot and darkness that you'll see around it. So, let's see, am I cutting through the wood yet? I'm blacking out the mirror from this angle, so if it does go through the wood, you'll be able to see it. Remember, we are sitting on a metal bed, so we're not you know, looking too advanced. So there's the side of the laser, so we know we're in the middle somewhere. And you can easily, when the smoke clears, see where the laser gets through. Now, I'd say, you know, looking at this, we're probably about halfway through, if not two thirds. So we're gonna go ahead and keep watching that mirror as we watch the rest of the cutting. And keep an eye on the mirror because as soon as it starts to go all the way through, you're gonna see the light of that laser showing through the wood. As you notice it grows in the end of the grooves, you're seeing there's not much refraction, there's not much flame, but you are noticing there is some smoke. There's always gonna be smoke. You're dealing with a little stick of fire the width of a human hair. So, you know, be as it as it may, when you're dealing with a little bit of smoke, I've dealt with worse smoke from bonfires. So, okay, so, so there's the upper part, there's the bottom part. If you notice, I'm just playing with the mirror and trying to catch it going all the way through as we're still doing the cut cycle. Now, if you notice, there is a little bit of yellowing on the wood. That is okay. That is just from the smoke rubbing against it, kind of like soot. Um, if you've ever been in a smoker's house, you will see where it uh, they have this wonderful stain of yellow on their white walls. And if you were to scrub their walls, um, it would be truly white, and then you'd be able to tell the yellowish difference, okay? Let's see, now, see that right there? We've got smoke coming from underneath the wood. That right there shows that we are making it through. So let me re-angle the, the mirror. This should be almost our final cut, if our final cut, if not almost our final cut. If you notice, so I keep the mirror there, trying to catch it as it engraves some more. Yep, see how you're seeing the red dots appear on the mirror? There we go, there's a couple of them right there. That shows it's making it all the way through the wood. So, here I think we're on the fourth cut cycle and we're almost through. Now the cool thing about poplar and about cutting with a laser, when you cut with a laser, you're not just, you know, telling it where it should pop out. You're actually cutting the material, so you are actually going to see it pop out. Um, it's more relevant and more evident when you use uh, acrylic. Uh, I have, let me see, I can't remember what thickness this is on my acrylic. Um, this right here is probably the same thickness as this poplar. It's about six millimeter thick acrylic. And see, here we go again, more smoke coming out from underneath the wood. Not above it, but below it, okay? With that smoke coming out from right there, I'm touching it with my mirror from where it's coming out at, that shows that we are making it all the way through the wood. I'm gonna put the mirror back down there. See if I can't catch it coming up and down. There we go, there's some more right there. So we're making it through the wood and we're not having any issues making it through the wood. Nothing is really catching on fire. Yeah, we had one little lapse of, of fire, probably a little too much sap in the wood. But that's another thing that yellow stuff comes from, that's the sap and everything else. Now, this big piece of wood in the middle of the L should pop out on this cycle. Um, if not this cycle, it'll pop out on the next one. That O from the O right there should pop out, no problem. When I do this with acrylic, it's actually kind of cool because as it's engraving and you reach that point where that piece pops out, it will just drop. And then I have to pull a whole bunch of small acrylic pieces out of the bottom of my bin. Um, so, but I mean, you gotta remember guys, when dealing with a laser, nothing is an exact science. You can make it an exact science when you set certain patterns, when you set certain things that you do on a daily basis, you can have a booklet longer than War and Peace with twice as many pages in it about how you do every little product, every little specification, the power, the 
just everything. See right there, there we go again for the, the top. It's kind of hard to see because mustard's over the metal. But we're making it through. See? And if you notice, when it comes down the line, see how it's just coming down the line? You can barely see it. Because it's either making it all the way through, or that crack is so deep, so deep, because we're dealing with six millimeter poplar that you can't see the light of the laser. So like I said, guys, when laser engraving, okay, there it went off. So I've done a total of six passes. I'm gonna move the laser up. And pardon me, guys, I gotta grab my, uh, oh, there it is. Got to grab, you're gonna laugh at me, but my stand for holding my phone. It's actually just a clamp that I stick on the bottom of the phone and let it sit. Erg. Okay, so. Oh! Drop the phone. Sorry about that. So, anyway, so. Yes, my videos are raw. I do not edit them for a reason. Say, now I'm gonna lift this up. After I drop it a couple times, like an idiot, I'll flip it over. No, see, look, no, look at that. The part in the in the hook on the U popped right out on accident. Okay, it's actually laying right there in the bed of the laser. It popped right out. No problem, no complaints. It just said, "Okay, I'm done," and it popped right out. So there's one piece out. I wonder, can I get that up? Oh, see the. The part from the O popped right out. We'll just push it down into the top. I can't find my little screwdriver I usually use to do this. See, now a lot of people think that when us laser engravers, hobbyists, whatever you want to call us, do this stuff there's some you know theater trickery in it that we don't show people okay so look I have the the leads for a uh, multimeter I'm going to use it because that seems to actually work the best since I can't find my little screwdriver okay if you notice yeah there's a couple little entrails that are left well to get the love because it didn't cut through up here and to finish the outer cut on here and the big O, which I, I wonder if it'll pop out. Yeah, I'm banging on it pretty hard. It's not popping out. But we got the O out, the little part from the U out, the center from the E out. Now, I'm going to flip it back over and I'm going to show you something. Okay? We're going to look at an angle from inside the O. Hopefully my camera will focus. There we go. Uh, I thought I had it to focus. Okay, so you can't see it very well on the camera, but it's not burnt. It's not charred. It has a light brownness to it. So yes, it's been around something that's been burned, and that's mainly from the uh, the soot coming out from when the smoke was there. But it's not charred. You're not talking about. See, there we go. There's a good shot of it. You know, it's not black and burnt. And if you rub your finger on it, your finger's going to come out black. It's not like that. It's nice and smooth. It's got a good finish to it. Working these K40 lasers is like working a piece of fine machinery. You have to figure out how it works and how to make it work best for what you need it to do. I've done everything from wood engravings on plaques. If you notice all these wonderful little blanks here, those are countertop laminate samples. These are gray, poly, uh, not polyurethane, but plastic discs, okay? I have more poplar here. I have oval and rectangular plaques that I bought from Walmart. These work great to engrave on. They already have a, a, an edged border on both sides. I have a full box of colored tile that looks like marble and plain white tile. When dealing with plain white tile, you want to use a stain to go inside the engraved part of the tile to make it work. Here is my dog tags. I do dog tags for customers. Uh, Green Bay Packers, if you don't know what that one is, you're crazy and don't know your American uh, culture. That is the Mustang symbol and then of course an Audi symbol. A 3D ant made in wood 
and plastic. And if you see right here is the wood I cut it out of. The plastic I already threw away. Um, you know, just to show you how creative you can get with a laser, there is no limits. Here is a piece of just junk hardwood I had. I engraved on it. And then, to make a stand for it, I used a 2x4. And then I engraved on the 2x4. I routed the edges to give it a nice finished... To give it a nice finished look. And then I put a nice clear coat, uh, not a clear coat, but a, uh, a stain on it, okay? And then my buddy now has a Happy Horse Ranch holder, uh, sign and holder for his sign. So, I mean, there is no limits to what you can do with a laser. The limits are strictly your own imagination. Here are laminate floor samples. They come in many different shades and colors, and when they engrave, they engrave amazing. It's something you should really check out if you're laser engraving. Remember that the biggest part of laser engraving is not what you engrave or how you engrave it. It's whether or not you have the contrast to make sure that it looks good when you engrave it. So I'm going to set the cut cycle for another three cycles. Uh, should be more than enough to get through what I need. Actually, I'm going to go fourth just because I actually hit add task one too many times and now you're probably wondering what's it going to do to the areas that Jari have already punched the wood out of you know what's going to do nothing because that wood has already been cut away with the laser therefore it's not going to do anything it's just going to zoom right by it. and if there's any little tidbits sticking out like there was in the o and the e it's just going to instantly burn them up see there's a little bit of wood left over in that one thing and it just burnt it right up. And now it's gonna go around the bottom half, go around the top half, and I'm gonna be done. So, like I said, guys, the only limit to laser engraving is your own mind. If you are smart enough to think of a way to do it, and if that means repeating the same step over 50 times, or finding material that's thinner so you can do it, that's completely up to you. It's your life, your laser engraver. Don't let anyone tell you how to do it because it is yours. Now you can take other people's advice and you know use it to make your stuff better, but you do not have to follow what anybody else says because it is your laser engraver. It's your life or your business or whatever you want to do with it. Enjoy, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, my company's name is Unengraving Matter. Um, I do have a Facebook page just for my business. And uh, also you can find me on uh, some of the laser groups uh, when it comes to engraving tidbits, stuff like that. I'm usually on there a lot, helping newbies. Um, now, I'm still technically a newbie because I've only been doing this a couple months but considering the fact I've only been doing this a couple months and I'm producing almost half my wages uh, from laser engravings that I'm selling uh, I'm catching on pretty quick so if you need any help questions comments concerns comment below um, or find me on Facebook go to my uh, company page it's unengraving matter a n engraving matter three words thanks guys have a good one you'll see this posted on my uh, company website